Don't ask me to the beach, don't ask me to the mall, but ask me to rock, I'm gonna answer that call. It's a rock and roll line for me. Oh, it's a hockey talk line for me. Oh, hand me my guitar and turn up the lights. It's gonna be another rock and roll night. Hey everybody, I'm Hot Rod Walt from Atlanta, Georgia, USA, and I'm uh, happy to be here for the uh, Hot Rod Hoedown uh, with my friends uh, Whistle Dixie and uh, the Maitland Mafia. And uh, so we're at Muso's today here in Newcastle and uh, striping up a couple guitars and they were kind enough to uh, help us have some guitars to uh, use at our event this weekend. And uh, so pretty fun, so I'm glad to be here. And uh, I just talked to Fred Gretsch and uh, he said to check his Twitter tomorrow morning and he's gonna put up all the pictures that I just took and uh, put a little shout out to Musos for making sure that they keep uh, pro-line guitars up. And a lot of music stores just have, you know, uh, entry-level models, but there's 70 Gretsch guitars on these walls. And that's pretty impressive, no matter what country you're in. So that's why I'm here, right now. <laughs> right there, there's my concept. <laughs> I mean, all pinstripers usually have like a a go-to uh, starting point. My starting point is to um, mark center and then uh, build the centerpiece out and then once that foundation is made then you can just kind of go off of it with whatever uh, whatever the shape is of the guitar that you know will handle it. And I like doing things symmetrical uh, so you have to kind of read the guitar and see what you can do on both sides because you know this side's wide open this side's got knobs all over it and plus when you're right-handed you have to pull your left line first so I have to pull my left line and go well I gotta make sure I don't go anywhere where it's gonna be knobs in the way on the other side it's mind-blowing to me that if I google hot rod walt Gretsch pinstriping whatever and I've, I've pinstriped 500 Gretsch guitars so all over Google, you'll see my guitars all over the world. And that, that's pretty mind blowing, you know, it's surreal. The center is basically, the foundation is built, now I can kind of build off of it and kind of go nuts, you know. When I did uh, all the gu guitars for Gretsch in California, everyone had to be different. That's not that easy. 500, well, the official numbered ones for Gretsch is 342, plus I did another 30 or so that I did back and forth mailing them back and forth Georgia to uh, California. And, uh, and then in the private sector, I've striped hundreds. People ship them to me and uh, do them, ship them back. I've done all of them. You know, some days you're, sometimes you're floating on a cloud and some days you're digging a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> just like gigging, you know, same thing. Some days it's just like great, and some days you're digging a ditch. <laughs> but I've been a Gretsch uh, artist for uh, 13 years or so, Gretsch official, you know, artist, like in the catalog and that kind of stuff. I think once that happened to me, uh, I felt like I could retire. That's how, like, thrilled I was, you know? He's like, wow, okay, that's pretty fun, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, to, uh, you know, be a rockabilly guy endorsed by Gretsch. Uh, musically, for me, what I do, rockabilly, psychobilly, honky-tonk, Americana, I kind of like cover all the bases, you know, all wrapped up in a rockabilly package, kind of, you know. I got my first guitar when I was 12 or 13, you know. I, uh, I'm not a prodigy of any sort. I come from a 100% non-musical family. You know, like the kind where you, if I sat down on the couch with a guitar, people look at you like you got two heads. My, my parents did send me to uh, guitar lessons. I think I took uh, six. The best part about it was that the, the lady was an old woman. She was old to me, but her name was Mrs. Beers. Oh, yeah. I was like, all right, it's a cool name. 
But uh, I told her, I said, you're gonna have to teach me something cool or else I'm out. So she taught me how to play Wipeout. I was like, I'm hooked. And then I was done. No more guitar lessons for me. So for real, I had three albums out of my original music before I even knew the names of the chords I was playing. No joke. And I, got, I have 13 albums of original music. All right, let's flip her over. All right, here we go. I mean, I don't know what I can get away with saying here, but sometimes it takes uh, balls. You have to drink a lot. <laughs> Be like, who's playing this guitar? You are. Yeah, what I use is, uh, it's uh, one shot. Yeah, overnight. Overnight before you can do, do anything with it. It's uh, enamel. It's a uh, it's, uh, painter's penure, like sign painting paint. And it's made, uh, it's just regular straight up old enamel. So it takes, it takes a little while overnight usually for it to dry. Yeah, so a lot of people maybe might think they're gonna get their guitar striped and then rock it out that night. And it's just, it's gonna be on your clothes, <laughs> yeah.